a right-wing host has claimed that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are ethnically cleansing white people from small town America. Frankly, they, they let the mask slip when you see what's going on in Springfield, Ohio, when you see, and I don't use this word lightly, but what is, I think, government backed in some ways, dare I say it, ethnic cleansing of Americans. Every single massive influx of migrants, of refugees, always seem to go to the most red states, the most MAGA counties. How about election interference? How about foreign election interference? MSNBC, you guys want to talk about foreign election interference? How about importing hundreds of thousands, millions of people into the most patriotic American towns? And suddenly, overnight, they all become citizens, right? That's what the New York Times was reporting not too long ago. The same papers that they're using to work, allegedly, probably the same papers that they're going to be using to vote. So don't lecture me about foreign election interference, Morning Joe and Morning Mika, when you guys are opening the floodgates. Oh, wait, it was the Biden regime that permanently welded open the floodgates down on the, on the southern border. Oh, you want to talk about the masks slipping, right? Oh, they let the mask slip. No, no, no. I, I think you let your hood slip. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. You just ripped the hood right off. You're just like, I am a proud racist. The Republican Party's racist. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh, now, that insane blonde is uh, Natalie Winters, right? Um, e even her name is white. Winters. Okay. All right. Sure. Uh, she's lying about what's going on in Ohio, though. Okay. Uh, th this, this is related to the whole Republican smear job about Haitian migrants in Ohio who went to the area, by the way, for jobs because they were told, hey, there's jobs there. Or they heard there's jobs there. So you should go there uh, if you want a good job. And they're like, oh, hell yeah. They went there to get jobs and to work while they're temporarily allowed to live and work in the country. Uh, and they didn't go there to ethnically cleanse small town Americans or to vote. Th that's the other lie that she throws in there is like, uh, they're using their papers to vote. Undocumented uh, immigrants or people who are not citizens are not allowed to vote. Okay, they're not able to vote. Uh, you have papers uh, that allow you temporary protected status. That still doesn't mean it, you're able to vote. You can get an ID in some states, and that still does not allow you to vote if you're not a U.S. citizen. So let's just be very clear about that. We have laws in the books that prevent undocumented immigrants from voting. So she's just lying about all of this, all right? Now, again, as I mentioned, they're not illegal, but number two, they're not eating your pets, and three, they're not driving up crime, okay? A again, they can live and work in the United States legally, and she's like, oh, well, you know, allegedly work. They do work if they're able to get jobs. Now, look, some of the issues there is that so many have come from, uh, you know, from, from Haiti, do this small town that they filled up all the jobs that were there pretty fast. And so, yeah, that is an issue, right? And so, yeah, you're going to have a, if you're a small town like that, you're going to have some, some issues with, oh, we've got an influx of people and we don't have enough jobs for them and enough, not enough places for them to live. And so that, it feels like something that is, uh, that, that's something that the federal government could have planned a little bit better to be fair. Uh, but of course, you have Republicans that are like, no, we're, we don't want to plan at all. We just want to uh, basically allow them to come in uh, and, you know, overwhelm the area so that we can point at them and say, ha, whoa, look at that. We got to kick them all out. No, you, you're, you're actually blocking the administration and the proper, you know, uh, proper administration of these areas and resettlement efforts uh, and, and, in order to cause chaos, because that's what Republicans do. They cause chaos and break things. And then blame the people that are in charge that are not them, the ones who broke it in the first place, uh, and say, oh, look at a broken system, broken system, elect us, we'll fix it. The, all they are on the right are chaos agents that go and break government and then say, oh, we have the fix for it. And oh, that fix happens to be less government uh, and more private corporations, privatization, uh, but also super racist policies like uh, kicking everybody out, all the immigrants. Oh, okay. Well, great. Uh, so now, the reason, oh, oh, oh by the way, and, and the reason that they're here in the first place is not because, like, 
Obama, uh, you know, Obama or, or Biden, Obama, Biden, Harris, whatever Democrats welded open the doors. No, um, they're they're fleeing government violence, corruption, and gang activity in Haiti because Haiti has been devastated. I thought Republicans are supposed to care about Haiti. I mean, I, I thought Republicans were like, oh, I cannot believe what the Clinton Foundation did to Haiti. What a terrible thing. Now, of course, all that was political. They didn't give a damn about the people of Haiti. And neither did the Clinton Foundation, to be honest with you. But um, they had a devastating earthquake back in like 2010, 2011, um, devastated their port, Port-au-Prince. Uh, and so, yeah, they're, they're dealing with a lot of issues. Um, obviously, there's a lot of destruction uh, from that, uh, the earthquake and the hurricanes that have followed. Uh, and they've had a, a, an incredibly difficult time rebuilding. Uh, but the biggest problem that Haiti faces today is the massive amount of debt it owes to the United States and the international banks for these um, predatory development loans. So, so that's what they are. Uh, basically, these development loans have such terrible terms that the countries that take these uh, loans end up getting mired in debt for uh, you know centuries, <laughs> basically. Uh, oh, you owe us this much money. And so all that wealth that's generated on the island gets distracted uh, or extracted uh, and goes right into, you know, the, the bank accounts of these giant international banks, as well as the U.S. Treasury. And so it's extractive. Uh, and so, yeah. And of course, while these banks and countries like the U.S. are extracting wealth, from places like Haiti, the people end up getting mired in uh, massive amounts of poverty. Uh, and so that, of course, leads to, you know, the, the poverty, corruption, uh, crime, gangs, and then people end up wanting to leave that. And where do they go? They go to America, where they actually have the promise of the American dream. And so now we created this problem, okay? And so when people do leave, and come to America, you know, as refugees, um, suddenly you get these racist Barbies that are like, oh my God, I can't believe we're being ethnically cleansed. Shut up. Just, just shut up. Like, you're a racist, okay? Shut up. Why do they keep going to the MAGA uh, counties? Well, that's because you keep crowing about creating all these jobs. Again, people want to work. They want to make a living. They want the America dream. But see, the problem here is people like Natalie Winters they look at that and go, no, 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 America dream. <laughs> That's for white people only. Okay, well, we get it. You're a racist, as well as a shameless liar. No wonder you're on Steve Bannon's podcast. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media, through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shutting down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.